Now for once, we're finally gonna go into, um, Silly Street. That's what it's called, Silly Street. It's very silly, because it's all equal. Now we're going to our first instance of walking to a shopkeeper, and this will happen a lot. This will happen often. So, yeah. If you're playing this game, expect to go to a lot of shopkeeper streets, because mainly every single Toon Tath is a shopkeeper on the street. It also comes very annoying later on, because car buildings get a lot more common. So, if there is a building that you need to go to, and it's a car building, you either take it down or go to another district. That's kind of annoying, actually. Yeah. Honey Ha Ha's place is really on the way. You will be able to see it just by walking. Look at that cock three. So you just walk around this corner and you see the laughing place. Just right there. You cannot miss this place. It's in such a distinct location, it's hard to walk by it. So yeah, anyways, this is the laughing place. Here we are on the map of Silly Street. We walk inside and hopefully we get to choose what gag we can use. Stro and Squirt are great, but you're gonna need some gags to fight those higher level cogs. When you team up with other oh hi. When you team up with other tunes against the cogs, you can combine your gags for even more giggles. Try different companies to gags see what works best. To start you off, you can choose between sound and tune up. Sound is special when it, it hits, it damages all cogs better than single cog. Tune-up hits all of your targets too, but they aren't cogs. Instead of hitting the cogs, you can heal your tunes by making them laugh. It doesn't hurt the cogs, but it'll help your friends laugh longer in battle. I understand it's a tough decision, so take your time to choose wisely. You may want to ask a few friends what they think so you can plan strategies better. When you are ready to decide, come back here and take your pick. That's all. That's about all I can tell you. Good luck on training. And we're already gonna choose you up. Done. <laughs> ah, great decision. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I I can't just give you the gags. Didn't Flippy tell you about the training? Before you buy those gags, you need to know how to use them by collecting film strips. Tunis you can give you a few tunes to to grab them, which are fitting film strips, which form an animation to show you how to use your new gags. When you collect all 15, you can get the final gag training cast that allow you to use them. You can check your progress in the studio book. You can also, you can now turn up between the That's about all I can tell you. Good luck with training. Well, honey, haha. Ha. Saying a lot. So I didn't really talk about the choice between sound and tune-up, but I might as well say that again. If you're planning on getting tune-up, just get tune-up immediately. Trust me, if you get tune-up last, it's one of the worst things that will happen to you. The reason why this is, is because tune-up is sort of hard to train. Like, I mean, how often is it are you going to be able to use tune-up gags when somebody's weak? That means, like, every time you see somebody weak, you get to heal them. So it's kind of situational training it. So starting early on is one of the best things. And it's also really helpful, because when you're doing buildings or whatever, you have to, um... Okay, so I got distracted um, when I was trying to get a tune-up. But what I was trying to say is that in boss battles, buildings, really any any long battle, tune-up is a very helpful supporting tool, mainly because it heals tunes, and that's why it's so great. The, the amount of health that you can recover for another tune is just incredible. The amount of damage cost can put onto you is really, really immense. Like, it's so great that it overwhelms you in just a couple of turns. However, tune-up is there to outlast survivability in these battles, which is why tune-up is very important. But if you aren't going for tune-up, it's not like it's a sin or something that will detriment you. Because honestly, tune-up, because of its, its great importance, that it's one of the most common gags in Toontown. So usually, every time you are in a battle with some other tunes, they'll always have tune-up. I guarantee it. If you're still not convinced of getting tune-up first if you're going for tune-up instead of going for sound, um, sound is very easy to train mainly because it's just they aren't darn right powerful. Being able to hit all cogs at once is just really strong. It's, it's quick, it's easy to use, it's just extremely powerful. And it becomes a lot more common and easier to use once the levels go on. It's probably be one of the first level 7 gags you'll get by the end of the game. Sounds are usually a must-have, which is why, you know, you'd be using sound a lot, because pretty much every single tune who plays Toontown uses sound to destroy everything. 
and because of how common sound is, is also kind of same as like how common tune-up is. But the only difference between um, using sound and using tune-up is that sound stacks with all the other gags. Well, tune-up, the first one who goes, goes. Say they're going to use tune-up and it kind of heals everybody and does massive healing. It's kind of unnecessary for you to do the healing. That's that's pretty much the reason why tune-up is one of the hardest gags to train, and it's why I recommend it to be one of the first gags to train. Now, keep this in mind that if you start with tune-up first, it will be very useful in the beginning parts of the game, like Donald's Dog or Daisy's Garden, because you'll be that one tune who has tune-up, and you'll be able to get you back up to full health, and you'll have a lot more easier time doing your tasks, believe me. Uh, not having tune-up is, of course, not that bad, though. I mean, having sound is still a pretty good choice, but really the only reason why I recommend tune-up first is because of how hard it is to level it. So yeah, sorry for going on such a large, large tangent. So now, back to the let's play. So anyways, um, we got our first tune task, which is to defeat four cogs in two down central. So we're going to loopy lane, because that's where all the people are, and we're going to take out some cogs. Yeah. I was only watching one of my recordings for like a minute, and I really went to sleep. That's kind of weird. Or at least two or three minutes. Like, you you go idle really quickly. Okay, we're all here. Fight the double talker. Double talker over here. Hopefully the double talker choice. That's what I meant to say. Um, that's water. Plus, like, it's really thirsty. Oh my speed hacking! <laughs> Please let that yes man join. That'd be awesome. Alright. Did I get my... Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. So I fought those cogs, right? But I crashed, so I didn't get <laughs> the experience for it. But I didn't get to use from the gig designer. My gigs weren't lost, which is, which is pretty nice. That's nice. So as we're still on the streets and we still have plenty full of gags, I'm just gonna go run to the Tune HQ on the street, because now we're done with our two task. Very nice. Um, I got some good score experience there. Halfway to like, to level 50. We got a little glitchy Dorvin back here. This person almost got their level 4 gags. Pretty nice. I might want to train my um throwing squirt gags in a little bit. I don't, actually what I'm trying to do is trying to get like a bunch of uh, big cog tasks so I can train. That way I'm getting rewarded while I'm training. I mean it's not quick. Think about it in the long run, just me. Just doing work. So, three low two plus cogs. Let's do that. And we can go find a lot of them. Watch, watch. As I find, like, no level two cogs. Oh, look at this. Level one cog right there. <coughs> right off the bat, excuse me. And still level two cogs. Oh, I need three of them. Oh, dang it. You're kidding. Find me a level two cog. Is that level two? That's level one. I don't care. But I see a level two right there. He's dead. Okay. <laughs> Let's find that level two cog. Is that a level two cog? It's level two cog. Let's take him out. Oh, please. Look at all these cogs right there. It's gonna come. <laughs> you see what I did there? He said, what's up, bro? And I said, how do you know? YOLO. <laughs> I can't believe it. Astra knows about my secret. And now he's friends with me. Okay, that's Tuno Track 2. All the way. Um, hang on. Let's do track three, blah blah to two town. Let's go down to the lane. Okay, let's 
Okay. So now we're gonna go to Loopy Lane. Uh, I actually want to stock up some gags too. Because it's kind of running that low on the level 2 gags. There's 5 Lawbots, so. It's gonna be a really healthy amount. Look at that orange door! Two Town's getting wackier by the moment. I don't really see why I have a lot of screen flowers. Because, really, I'm not going to be using a lot of screen flowers anymore. I'll at least have three and put like two and two tarts. That's, that's a more wiser choice, but at least everything is even. Even like Silly Street. Alrighty. Let's go on to Loopy Lane. Now, I should have like got a different task instead of the Lala task. I kind of just chose the first thing I saw. But if I didn't do that, then it would have been. I would still be with Astro. Okay, cool. Our first one right off the bat. Get it, bat. Oh! <laughs> Whoa. I literally thought that they were in a cog pound walking over the street. Cause. See, the easiest thing about this, you can see any law bot, and most law bots can be like, what, well, one second one shot them. Move on. That one makes this test sort of easy. The hard thing is finding the law bots, which is actually rather easy on this street, because I think it's 80% law bot. Well, that's 30%, close enough. You know, like, sometimes when the rarity says like there's 0% just cog on um, the street, you can still find them anyways. It's not exactly 0%, it's just rounded to 0%. It could be like something like, I don't know, 1%. Or 5%. But really, it's close to nothing, so I guess you can call it 0%. What the heck? What is that? That's three law boss. This thing, this fire hydrant, was leaning forward, right? And so... I guess I like this red line in, in the battle scene. It's hilarious. Yeah, this bloodsucker is kind of thirsty too. Please. Please. <gasps> Maxi coming in. Oh my god, I came in. Ran time. Oh my god. Hey! That was nice. Alright, so that's all the cogs done. What I'm gonna do now after getting this tenth, I'm gonna run to Professor Pete's um little school and I'm gonna get a task <laughs> directly from him. Hopefully he talks in a third person. I don't think that is the case, but it's just an experiment, and if you're curious enough, like I am, you, you gotta do it. Now I'm gonna turn in a task, but I'm not taking a task from these guys. I am gonna get the task from Professor Pete. Like I said, I wanna see if he'll talk in third person, and yeah, it's just all in curiosity. I'm not sure if it'll actually work at all, but I'm gonna try. Okay, so I can't get him from him, but I can do this. Five cog gear from two plus cogs for a lap boost. That's right, I'm constructing a study of the cogs. I've been wondering, what really makes those cog suits- Oh, sorry. Juice tick. Gears must be part of it. I'm sure of that. Based on explosions, they have plenty of them. Mind grabbing some from your next cog battle? Make sure you get them from at least two cogs so they're big enough to examine. Okay, I need to do the voice for him. I forgot the voice. I'll do it next time. But when you go to him, and you get the task from him, you'll get the direct task from him. That's really cool. So if, instead of like going to a HQ, and him saying that you go to Professor Pete's, you go to Professor Pete's place, and he gives you his own task. Which were, five cockroaches from little two cogs. So kind of, if you got a task from him, and you go to their shop, you get sort of a, a sneak peek, you call it that. Okay, so now we're at Silly Street. We're gonna take five cog gears from level two cogs. We only need five. I'm certain that um, you'll get 100% drop. So any level two cog will do. 
So that's why I'm on Slow Street. Slow Street's the closest thing to Frederick Pete's place. So yeah. That's why we're here. I find a cogs for the problem because I don't see any cogs. Where are the cogs? Is this street literally cogless? Are there no cogs on the street? Oh, there's a little two butt sucker right there. Going around. Blood sucker. Where you go? Where did blood sucker go? I oh, guess weird. Yeah, McMuffin. You're right. Zero. There's nothing here. I see a flunky in the distance. There he is. Please let me come in. God, no! It took all day to find a level two card. Sorry, it's all a delayed reaction, but I like how I said nothing to him, and he said lol, no problem. Like he's talking to himself. <laughs> that was really awkward. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, wait. It's not 100%? Oh man, I'll be doing this for a while, guys. It's not 100%. I swore it was the last time I did this task. Another cog down. Let's see if I get a cog here or not. Uh. I might not get it. We might see. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, we didn't get it. That guy's... Like, why why should we not get it? Okay, good. Cause I was like, oh wait, so he got a cog gear. He stole it from me. Yeah. Hi, Salt. What? 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 How many t <laughs> It's been too much. Two different cogs that I didn't get a gear from. It's not fair. 